All right. Good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday. We are live. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It is my honor to have you here, even if you're watching the replay at some other point in time. Thanks so much for joining me on this very special live stream. I don't know if it's any more special than the other ones, but we're going to do some Q&A tonight. We're going to talk about some common kitchen questions, some questions that uh, you have sent to me through the community posts, some questions that are pretty common questions that most people may have or not, or maybe you'll have them after this. And hopefully we'll get some questions live uh, as we go through tonight and, and talk about kitchen design, kitchen layouts, anything kitchen related. So if you have a specific question, make sure that you put it in the chat at any time. I'm keeping my eye on the chat tonight, more so than other nights. Put a few question marks before and after maybe the question if you have something that you want me to address or something that you want us to talk about during the live stream. So the first thing I am going to do is just bring up a few questions that uh, were sent to me from uh, viewers, people who commented on my community posts. So we're going to go through those. And uh, there's some some pretty good ones in there. But I'm always curious to hear your questions and see what you have to say about things that you maybe you're curious about. And uh, we might have the opportunity for everybody to uh, to learn, including me, because by all means, my this is advice that I give. And uh, no, it doesn't mean that it's, you know, the, the complete whole picture, I'm just one person. So let's do it. And we have a question already coming in live. So let's just do that. I'll do all the lives one, live ones, uh, uh, I'll prioritize all those. So I'm thinking if I'm going to say your name wrong, I'm going to do it right now. But I'm thinking it's Lean or Lean A. I don't think it's Lean A. It might be Lean, but I think it's Lean. Uh, you can correct me. I'm very sorry. Uh, I do have a question. What do you think about touch or touchless faucets. Cool. So this is something that was going to come up a little bit later. So this is great. Um, I think uh, I think touchless faucets are great. I think uh, voice activated faucets might be something that would be the most uh, ready to adapt smart technology for a kitchen that's currently out there. So in terms of all of the, you know, smart appliances and smart tech for a kitchen. I think uh, touchless and voice activation for faucets. And I think uh, the same thing goes for, for lighting. I think those are the most ready to adapt into anybody's kitchen and maybe easiest to adapt. Uh, yes, you can get all the all the stuff, all the, the refrigerators and all the Bluetooth items and everything like that. But um, those are, are very expensive and quite a big upgrade. So I think that having uh, maybe these are a little easier for most people to to get into their their kitchen. So I think uh, I'm a big fan. I mean, I, I have a touch faucet. You turn it on with your hands. It's it's what we've been doing for years and it's not really that big a deal. But I do think there's there it warrants, um, you know, maybe some attention. I more than it just being a cool feature, I think it could be a very useful feature, um, especially depending on how you 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 cook in the kitchen or whether you want to be touching the faucet. Maybe a chicken on your hands, raw meat or something, uh, to be able to speak to your faucet could be something that's maybe very beneficial. Um, or even just the touch ones with the elbows, I think is pretty cool. Pretty cool thing. So that's 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 kind of what I think about it um, overall. That's a great question, though. Let me just scale through. Hey, everybody who's joining me, I love it. Um, Da, 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 da. So make sure that you do have uh, a few question marks before and after your question, just so I don't miss it. I think I don't want to miss any as we go along here. So let's go to this one. Oh, yeah. And remember, as you uh, get into this, don't forget. Um, don't forget. Okay. Uh, my pantry and oven cabinets are separated by a window from other wall cabinets. Things that is thing thing is that pantry and oven are going to be ten inches taller. Is that a mistake? IKEA cabinets taller than the window. Uh, pantry and oven cabinet are separated by a window from other wall cabinets. So are they going to be taller than the other wall cabinets, or just taller than the window? If they're if it, they're all IKEA cabinets, and I don't see a reason why they would be taller than the other cabinets if they're mounted all. The proper heights if it's taller than the window i don't think it's that big a deal um but if you're using 30 inch cabinets and then these are going to be 90s which which essentially gives you a 10 inch height on on a wall cabinet um 
I don't think it's necessarily, I think it's because it's separated and there's a window. So even if the other cabinets are taller, you have a window, which could be a different height and you have those. Um, I don't think it's a mistake. I think you want to prioritize storage capabilities. And if you think you're going to get that out of those cabinets, I think that's number one, the first thing you want to address. And then if the look is, um, you know, something that you think will throw you off, then, you know, maybe you want to think about that that way. I would put it in the Ikea planner, see what it looks like, but I don't think it's that big a deal uh, to have them taller, if that makes sense. I hope I'm answering the right question, but that's uh, that was that's what you want to do. <laughs> Smartest kitchen is a Mark Tobin kitchen assisted by Ikea. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here, uh, Bluebell has a comment on the on the the faucets. I love my touchless faucet, but if you have an opportunity to have your installer hardwire it, do it. I have had to change the batteries a few times. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. So that's something. Actually, it's a really great point. I never thought about the fact that these things have to have some kind of power source to do the function that they're doing. Really good bit of information. If you have to have one of these, get it hardwired. So thanks for that. That's really good. Really good um, bit of info okay let's go to this question that came in from one of the comments here and i'll read it out to you hopefully it's not too small this is from at enough already 45 um they are asking hi i'm cu i'm considering doing a cabinet refacing i prefer wood not painted cabinets are there any special considerations to know with a wood refacing and i understand it's a good time to make some changes i like to swap external old style hinges with inside cabinet hinges and adding a lift for my kitchen aid mixer uh, modifying the cabinets etc the new wood veneer can cover up old hinges um, and any other tips on refacing so this is an interesting question so special considerations and just tips on on um, doing a refacing as a kitchen designer i'll be quite honest with you i'm not uh, super in the vein of refinishing. I'm not against it. I just, it's just not my, my forte. I don't know a ton about it because being in the industry of designing kitchens, my job was to sell the client a new kitchen. I wasn't trying to sell them a kit on refinishing. So normally if someone came to the office and they asked about refinishing, I'd send them to the paint department and they could handle that from there. However, it is a very big topic in the kitchen world because not everyone wants to get a new kitchen not everyone maybe it's in the budget or just it's just not the time it's just maybe not the kitchen for it maybe the layout is really really good and you don't want to change the layout so there's things that you just want to you just want to spruce it up my friends parents did the very same thing they refinished their cabinets they liked the layout the nice big kitchen and looks really really nice so I know it's a really big topic and so I would say my my general um you know my, I guess my general considerations would be, I wrote a couple notes down for this one. So just, just bear with me. So I would say you'd really want to make sure that you prep the surfaces really, really well. So the, the better you prep in a situation where you're going to do a refinishing, the, the, the better and longer the outcome is going to be, the better quality the outcome is going to be for what you're, you're doing. So whether you're putting on a wood veneer, whether you are uh, refinishing staining anything or even if you are painting make sure that you prep the surface really really well so i would do a little bit of research on you know what that would look like for the particular type of refinishing that you're going to do it sounds as if this uh person this viewer is trying to uh, do a veneer refinish and i would say that the the next thing you'd want to do if you're doing that is get the proper tools. So, so spend a little extra money and buy the proper trimming tools so that you can cut the veneer properly and finish the veneer properly and apply it the, the right way. That would be really key. And then this is also a really great time to update your doors and get new doors. So I would say the biggest and hardest part of a refinishing job is going to be refinishing the doors because generally those have the most grooves, they're the most time consuming to sand down to their original wood and then you know prep properly and stain and, and you know do the clear coat and all that stuff. So I would say that if you're going to do that, if you get new doors, that's maybe a big time saver. It, it is still very expensive. It's not like you're gonna save a, a ton of money, but definitely less money than doing a whole new renovation by, by far. Uh, so, so prep it really well, get the proper tools, and uh, think about new doors, because if you're doing the modifi modifications that you're talking about, 
now you have the opportunity to maybe change the configuration of drawer fronts or doors to accommodate the certain accessories that you want to add to the kitchen. So that's a good time for that. And I would say, um, what else? Yeah, that, that's that's really about it. Yeah, you can. Oh, and if you're going to spray them, if you're going to refinish them, make make sure you spray them. Don't don't do it with a brush or a sponge or. A, I think the best and most professional finish is going to be with with a with spraying. So that that's be the general advice. There's a whole world of refinishing out there, and I would actually just suggest that if you are thinking about refinishing your your cabinets, um, maybe start with the paint people on YouTube. I'm, I'm sure they have. I don't I don't know specifically if they have content just on that, but I'm, they probably do but just start to look up on youtube just re refinishing techniques um, for the type of technique that you want to do so i think that doing a veneer is a great way to go because you can cover up those holes and any blemishes on the cabinets give your, your kitchen a whole new fresh look but um you know number one it's 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 a diy project that that does take a lot of skill and i wouldn't say that it's just oh, i'll just do this because it's easy it, it definitely takes some skill so you would also maybe want to consider hiring someone who can really do a good job of that because you can really mess up a refinishing job and your cabinets end up looking worse than they that you started out with that's some general advice there but a lot of questions are coming in so let me just jump back up so i don't miss any and hopefully uh, i get these just a reminder make sure you put up some question marks in front of your question just so i know i can just see it that it's a question not just a comment so uh what are your opinions on siemens appliances 60 40 fridge freezer l-shaped corner units the l um Okay, let me just start with the 6040 fridge freezer. I depends. I mean, it depends on. The, I don't know specifically the Siemens brand appliances quality wise, so I, I'm kind of speaking in a turn. However, on the 6040 fridge freezer, that is, you know, if you have the space for something like that, I think it's a great thing having. You know, that obviously that would be normally a little bit wider of a fridge, and so you need a little bit more, you know, square footage to be able to accommodate that. So you have to balance that against other things that you that wall space would be taken up with countertop or storage or whatnot uh, or windows or, or whatever. Um, so the appliances, I, I can't really, I don't really have an opinion. The 60, 40 fridge freezer. I think it's great. Um, you know, it seems like we're getting bigger fridges these days. It seems like the, the standard 36 is increasing and more and more people want a little bit larger when they can accommodate that in their designs. And if you're just talking about an L shaped corner unit, um, like a cabinet if that's what you mean then i'm not a fan of any corner cabinets <laughs> so so um yeah i'll try to i'll try to get as, as many of these as possible hey helen my floor slopes three inches over 13 feet what if that's a big slope would it be better off with legs that can be adjusted or basic two by four base trimmed to level Ooh, dee, 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 dee. Well, assuming you cannot adjust, you can't fix the floor, um, and and three inches is a is huge over that span. So you're going to have a considerable toe kick, you know, issue. What is it better to to do one or the other? Um, I would say it's probably easier to do legs that are adjustable. I mean, as far as installation goes, I think it's. Uh, much easier to control that along the 13 foot run than it is to have uh, a two by four base trim to level. Um, the the base would definitely be very sturdy. So this that that sub base idea is generally one of the better ways to install cabinets, um, especially if they're customized or any cabinet really. So uh, I don't know if one's I, I think just for the ease of installation, having them on legs might be might be easier. But the two by four base, you know, you have to you'd have to start with a two by six base and go down to whatever it needs to be. Might be uh, might be what what, what you want to look for. Um, so you're going to have a really small toe kick because you want to keep the cabinets at the the proper height. So you got to shoot a line across the room, make sure it's at at the proper height that you want it, and then. Yeah, I, I'd probably go with the two by four base, but for ease of, like I said, uh, the legs might be the way to go. But someone might have experience. If you have experience installing cabinets, let us know in the chat what you think about that. 
Um, hey, Phil, Phil has a, a comment here. I saw YouTube chef with a floor pedal to control the hot and cold water so they don't have to use their hand. Yeah, I've seen that before too, actually. That's a good idea as well, other than the, you know, the elbow touch of the faucet or, or speaking to it. Ah, uh, cool. All right. Hey, how do German kitchens compare to other kitchens? Like German manufacturing? Uh, that's, that, it, that really depends on the, on the, Oh, you know, that depends on a lot of things. <laughs> I don't know if you can just, if I could just make a blanket statement, because obviously I, I don't know all the German brands. From what I understand, um, those European countries have the most progressive, you know, outlook on, on kitchen design. I think they're kind of in the lead as far as innovations go with, with not only style, but also just design features and you know hardware mechanisms and stuff like that but I, I don't think other places in the world have less quality products i mean they do but i think there's also comparable quality products in other parts of the world um not just not just in in germany so i, I think yeah i mean it, you you get a lemon in germany too so it, it sort of depends but I, but they do have good quality stuff overall, from what I can tell. <laughs> this is the highlight of my week too. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Okay, what is what what sealer do you recommend for a honed quartzite countertop? Uh, I, I'm going to just give you the blanket cop out statement here. I'm going to say talk to your fabricator and ask them what what sealer that they recommend. I, I'm not going to recommend a brand because I, 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 I've certainly not tested them all. I don't know them all. Um, there's a lot of, of great brands out there. A lot of times these will come pre-sealed depending on, on who it's coming from. If it's a Constantino product, um, you know, most likely it would be pre-sealed for a, 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 usually, but it's about a 15 year <clears throat> stain guard warranty. Um, so I, I would definitely probably go right to the fabricator and ask them directly what what do you recommend to to seal this with and and go with their recommendation because one you don't want to void a warranty somehow I don't think you would by using an off the shelf product but you just want to be sure that you well not you probably don't even get a warranty anyway with quartzite but you do get a seal warranty and you don't want to mess that up so I definitely don't want to give a a brand name because I I, re, I honestly don't know. Hey, hi Mark. I'm in a new build and I'm thinking of having all lower drawers and no cabinet doors aside from under the sink. Is this a mistake? No, I don't think so. But I would suggest that you make sure that you know what is going to be in those drawers and how you're going to access them. Not just not that the, that just their drawers. Are they going to be two drawer, three drawer, four drawer, five drawer? What combination and how they're going to be used? I I don't think there's you can have enough drawers, but sometimes a full height door with with a pullout might be more convenient depending on what's being stored on the pullout um so i would just say no it's not a mistake but just really know what you're putting on in those cabinets and um i think that looks i think it looks awesome just having all drawers looks great so it it's not a mistake you know but it it, it could be if you find that you know you you don't you have to store something that a, a drawer could do an okay job of it but you know maybe for one an appliance lift or you know a pull that has a lower you know side to it so you can actually get out the thing easier might be a better option so i would think give it along those terms cool all right uh ta -da -da -da. okay i'm gonna jump over to I'll just go to this comment. Usually kitchen refacing, refacing is to change door fronts, hinges, door guides. Yeah. Sometimes it is going to be more expensive than getting new cabinets. Yeah. I, uh, it, it's expensive. I don't know. You could probably do a, a, depending on what you're buying, but yeah, it, it is, it does get expensive for sure. Rob's here. Hey man, guys, you can make it buddy. I hope you are going live tonight too. Doing a guitar lesson, maybe a little bit later. All right, let's uh, let's keep going here, and just bear with me as I scroll through and look through the the comments. If I if I miss something, hopefully someone will remind me as we go. 
Oh, Maggie saying Germans take their kitchens with them when they move. Do all Germans do that? That is a thing, right? In some, I know, I think in South Africa, that's a thing. I think maybe in some parts of Australia, uh, that's definitely a thing. Certainly not something we would do in North America. Not that it couldn't, it doesn't happen. I don't know for sure, but yeah, I, I, unfitted kitchens. I, I've seen some some content on that. And I think I think uh, uh, Jeff has something like that on Homestead Studios. I think he interviewed um, some people who have who have that. So that is very cool. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> you missed all the good stuff, Patricia. I'm building my addition and would like drawers on the bottom of cover and cupboards above. Okay. Uh, do a pantry for additional storage and the rest doors are drawers more expensive than doors well you're buying more hardware so yes to have a cabinet with drawers you're going to spend more money than you would with with doors just because of the amount of hardware however does that give you the the kitchen that you need because i think it's important to prioritize budget towards function in a kitchen when when it makes the most sense and i think that's where it would make the most sense um so that that is a really good question but it, it, it definitely uh, would cost more. Vonda, we're almost at the end of our remodel. What should we focus on during the walkthrough? <laughs> focus on getting in there and getting using the thing. Um, that's, a, that's a great question. What should you focus on during the walkthrough? Um, you know, I guess it, it's, it's challenging um, because you're not... Sh sh a lot of times you don't know what, you know, it, everything can look good in a kitchen remodel. Everything's finished. So it looks really pretty. Uh, are the, are the doors and drawer fronts, you know, are, are they all lined up and level? That's, that's kind of one of the biggest things that, that people would want to have done is that, that, that everything's lined up and adjusted properly. So I, I would just make sure those things are, are done. You know, do you go around making sure they're screwed together properly? I, you know, I don't think you should go that far. Hopefully the people who are installing them know what they're doing. You know, I would make sure that the, the moldings are, you know, if you have, if you have crown molding or any type of molding work, you just want to have a look at it, make sure that there's no obvious, you know, gaps or if things need to be, be caulked a particular way that they didn't miss anything. Look for damages on gables of cabinets or on doors, things like that. But, um, I'd say just the biggest thing most people get annoyed with with a, a walkthrough or they see their new kitchen is doors are not adjusted properly. And uh, that's something that your your installer can do very easily and show you how to do it as well because you're going to need to do that through the lifetime of use in that kitchen. Um, but if I'm open to, to hearing what other people uh, would say that, I mean, your countertops, obviously, you want to check out and make sure there's no obvious blemishes in those or, or you know, th that you got what you, you wanted. And... Um, yeah, if I think of something else, I'll come back to that one. That's a really good one. All right. Has, has, has Gammy ever had questions or need of insight into her kitchen? I know she's lived a little longer than us young whippersnappers. Um, yeah, Gammy wonders why I designed her kitchen with an OTR when I... <laughs> when I go on so much about how I hate them. Um, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. And uh, and how come she doesn't have a wall oven when she used to have one and she loved it? So, David Kettle, what's up? Uh, can you put cabinets and worktops in front of a window where the bottom of the window is below the worktop? Um, you can't change any. Oh, because of conservation laws. Yeah, you can do that. You just have to have them customized and, and put it lower. It's not going to be probably a regular use, um, you know, where you're going to be doing a lot of work at because of the height, unless having something lower is beneficial to you because of your height, then that could be something that, that's very useful. I've done this a lot, actually. If you just have a window that's lower and you just have a run of cabinets, lower it, countertop underneath. It can be done, and I think there's no reason why you, you can't do that. And also, you could also use that as a window seat if you wanted to so because you're going lower you can just you know build in a bench window seat if it makes sense for that particular area because one the window seat can add storage and it's a place to sit if it if it makes sense in the layout so cool 
Do you think drawers or pullouts function better for pots and pans, or is it personal preference? I think it's probably personal preference, but I do like having a pullout instead of a drawer specifically for pots. And just because of what I mentioned before, the lower rail um, is uh, easier to access and a little bit more wiggle room for pot handles inside a cabinet than I think a drawer box is because normally the drawer box is going to be higher. Um, so, but now in terms of now you got to open a door and op and pull out a drawer. So that's like an extra step. So I, I don't know if one's necessarily better than the other, but for me personally, I find just having it on, on the pullout allows me to access it a little better. Um, and even, even when I'm putting things away, so like for instance, if it's, if it's in a, when it's on a pullout, you know, and it's it's a pot. Sometimes I don't have to pull the pull out out to put, get the pot into the thing because the 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 height of the box is not. It's only small, so it's something to think about. I I you know again I don't know if it's if there's a right or wrong way, but that's how I think about that. Cool. These are really great questions. I'm going to go on to uh, another question that was asked here online. So this came in from. You know, again, uh, at enough already 45, they had a couple questions. And this one is, can an island have two gas ovens? And does one have to be electric in the other gas? Would you recommend having one gas and one um, one electric? If you mean ovens, I, I, I don't, you know, first of all, in an island, I don't like to have an oven or a cooktop or anything in an island if I can help it. So putting two ovens, if you're talking about ovens and not cooktops, because originally I thought maybe this question meant like a cooktop, but if it's two ovens, I don't see why one would have to be gas and the other electric. And I don't know why having one electric and one gas would necessarily be beneficial. And I have no experience with a gas oven either. So that that that's a mystery to me. So I guess the question of can an island have two gas ovens? Yes, you could have three gas ovens, really. I mean, you have as many, I think, as would fit. Uh, does one have to be electric and the other gas? I, I don't think so. But if someone knows, if, I mean, I get, that's a great question for the specific building code in, in your municipality or your state or province. Um, that's a really good question for that. And would you recommend having it one gas, one electric? No. I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know if it, I don't know it w what the difference would be. That that's a really good question. I, I, I a lot of these questions I just don't have. You know, here's here's the the statement. Kind of comes down to what you need and um, what makes the most sense for your kitchen layout and and how you use. The, do you need two gas? Does anyone have any ideas about gas ovens? By the way, not not just cooktops, but the actual oven. I, I'm not sure. All right, let's 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 go on. Uh, Bosun Higgs, <laughs> I don't think that's your name. Uh, how do how do future proof the kitchen? I'm thinking network access point and Bluetooth speaker. What else? Future proof it. Um, yeah, network access point is a good idea. Bluetooth speakers and in, in various places could be something that you'd want to do. Um, yeah, it's hard to know, especially when it comes to uh, technology, how things are going to evolve. And, and it's, it's something that um, it can be challenging to think ahead. Well, I might need this later on down the road, but it's not even something that's really invented yet. When I think about the future of kitchens and in terms of technology, I think probably the next thing that would be, or, or down the road a little bit, I think we'll be able to just, you know, aside from actually putting the pot on the burner, controlling the whole thing and seeing the whole thing from a, a monitor a screen whether it's a phone a computer a laptop a tablet of some sort um or or other device maybe built into a surface will be something that's the most um you know accessible to people so that they can turn the heat down or turn the heat up or you know have a camera that that's you know looking at their their thing on their stove whatever they're making so but i don't know how you would actually future proof that um so yeah, that, that's that's an interesting question. Normally, when I think of future proofing a kitchen, I'm thinking in time. I'm thinking in terms of accessibility because you know, as you age, then that's when things are going to become different in the way that you use the kitchen. 
And so having having a way that you can uh, add things later on that make the kitchen accessible easier or, or making it accessible for future use is a good idea. Like the whole idea of aging in place, something I asked a, quite a bit about. I did a video on, you know, kitchen design ideas for boomers and people who are, who are of that generation and how just to design a kitchen that would be very functional for that, that age group. And then for, you know, us Gen Xers who are getting a little bit older too, and we don't want to be bending down or reaching up. We want to make our kitchens as functional as possible. So I think, you know, maybe one off the top of my head, if you're going to future proof a wall cabinet, get it in a size that, you know, you can easily add one of the standard size wall pull down units or you know other accessibility features later on down the road if you have a 36 inch wide wall cabinet you'll easily find a, a, a mechanism to fit that but if you have something that's an odd size or something like that it might not be e that easy to find something that, that fits that type of cabinet so you know the little things like that 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 could be beneficial but um in in terms of like you know, AI integration and, and technology integration, it's hard, hard to know, but I think these are, you know, your suggestions are, are good too, uh, better better than mine. Those are really good ones. IKEA drawers have a choice for no side panels or panels, have room for handles. IKEA drawers, you have a choice. Of, uh, are you answering a question? Maybe I'm not sure, Alan, but yeah, you're right. You can You can put the panels on or not. I don't know what it means. I'm not sure what you're answering, so my apologies. Let's keep going. Uh, da, 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 da. Julie, my cabinet maker won't put a pull-out bin under the sink. They suggest <laughs> that they put a small bin attached to the inside of the door instead. Uh, I never, I didn't, I, I, wow. I didn't realize they were paying for the, for the kitchen. <laughs> it's crazy. You should thank them. If they're paying for the kitchen, then they definitely should do anything they want to do inside that that cabinet. Otherwise, then I would say, well, uh, small bin attached to the inside of the door. The only one I recommend is the one that has the lid that just opens up as you pull the thing out. Those are pretty good. Make sure it has something to keep the things, but overuse and over time, that thing's going to get just as messy and dirty as, as a pullout. Um, so I... I don't think one is better than the other in terms of, you know, getting getting dirty. It's going to get grimy. I've seen them all. They, they're all going to get a little bit grimy, a little dirty. That they just are. So, the, the pull out one, you know, yes, you got to you got to pull it out with your hand as opposed to opening the door. I don't know if you know. For them to say they won't do it, I think is a is a little bit much for them to say. But having the small bin attached is still a good option but you know they, they wear out too it's a mechanism that opens and, and the lid opens if that's the one they're talking about so just overuse that's going to wear out i find those hinged things wear out quicker than than a slide with a slide you got to be careful of weight as you're pushing it in you're, you're putting weight on it and that that'll wear it out quicker as well so there's there's a little bit of a juggling act i think both are actually good but yeah, I mean, I'm being facetious. You know, they're trying to give you good advice, so I'm not taking I'm not taking that away from them. I'm just I'm just being funny. Um, so I think they they do have a good suggestion, but I think the other one is is not not that bad. All right, okay, it's a personal choice, but if you have to choose between an apron workstation sink and a simple workstation sink, which one would I choose, or which one would you choose? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if if you if you have a farmhouse kitchen, then I guess you could go with that. I think the maybe the benefit of the apron when it just comes down to to just purely nothing to do with the style is the fact that you you have the apron. If you have a water lip on it as well, uh, that can be you know very beneficial because water is going to get on your sink base doors and it's going to run down. There's going to be water spilled there. And having water on those door the door fronts, uh, the doors or, or you know false front or whatever, is that's going to make them susceptible just to damage over time. And ye, and most likely that's not covered under warranty. Water damage is never covered. And so what the apron does is just gives you a little bit of a barrier, a little bit more space between water and your drawer fronts or door fronts rather, uh, especially when it has the extra lip on the bottom for for water. So 
I guess I would say the apron would, would be what I choose. Um, because I, I, you know, I do, I, I don't care too much about the look. I, if it looks farmhousey or not like that part doesn't matter to me. So I think that's how I would, I would approach it. So Helen's talking about the ovens. She's had them for years. They're really nice for consistent temperature when baking. So there you go. Go put two gas ovens in that island and, and you're set. Nick, after the shock of kitchen pantry wire shelf prices, we're going for freestanding wire shelves from restaurant supply store. Interesting. At a fraction of the cost. New pantry is huge. Thoughts. Well, if you're saving money and you're getting storage, what's to say? I think it's a great idea. There's no point in buying overpriced, you know, wire shelving that probably isn't as good a quality as the, what you're getting. So I'm, I'm all for that. At the end of the day, if it's functional and you have everything stored and you're happy with the price, then I think it's a win. It's definitely a win. Which do you love more, the blind corner cabinet or the OTR? Wow, Jackie. What a question. Question of the night. Um, what do I love more? Probably, oh, geez, this is really difficult. Um, hmm. Which do I love more? The blind corner or the OTR? Um, I, I'm going to say I probably would like the OTR better than the blind corner. All right. You happy? You happy now? All right. I'm not, not going to explain it any further. I'm going to move right along. <laughs> the whole point of cooking is to be involved. You want a robot cook your food, go to McDonald's. Yeah. I mean, you're right, but it just, I just see it going that way. I just, I know, just the way technology is going, there's, it's, it's going to be more and more integrated um, as time goes on. Right now, we're quite resistant to it, and you know, we're not so sure about a lot of smart tech. But as time progresses, I think you'll see just a lot more of it in the kitchen. But you're absolutely right. I mean, the whole point of cooking is to be involved in what you're doing. It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a hands-on experience. It's, it's. The smell, the texture, the taste, the sound, it, it's part, it's an experience. It's, it's an art form. Not when I do it, it's, you know, it's horrible, but I totally get what you're saying. All right. All right. So a lot of people talking about the, the gas. So the gas is the way to go um, for baking. Interesting. Well, that's cool. Yeah, lesser of the evils. Yeah, it is. I think it's a I think the blind corner is a great place to store your OTR. All right, there you go. All right, let's go to any more, any more? Any more questions? I'm kind of behind here. Oh, no problem. OTR is an over-the-range microwave. And um I am not a fan at all. So, all right. Are you ready to bring color in your kitchen cabinets? I am. I'm ready. I just put in a green cabinet. Cabinets. I just put in green. If it was my own personal kitchen, I'd probably do something different. I probably wouldn't do white again. You know, I'm ready for color. I'm not against color. I do like white. All right, I chose regular stainless steel workstation sink with the grids. I love it. However, it is a multifunctional, but little maintenance is required. And most people do mention that they do love their workstation sinks, you know, whether or not it's an apron sink or a regular like undermount style sink. And um, yeah, there is a little bit of maintenance, I imagine, with all the, the attachments and things like that that you have to store and clean and, you know, if you're using them or whatever. So yeah, but, but I do hear a lot of people do love the the workstation sink um and they're becoming much much more popular they're becoming more and more available for you know the average the average us consumer at at your regular big box store so i think um i would probably have probably would have gotten one for their last renovation but i just didn't want them to spend like the one at home depot was like 400 some dollars and um i just want to spend that money on a, on a sink so i ended up spending 300 dollars. <laughs> so the green was awesome yes it was 
All right. Oh my gosh. Can't wait to see an OTR inside the corner cabin. I think you've just invented a new concept. Maybe I did. Maybe it just pulls out. Bam. Microwave. Stuff's back in. You can store stuff. I think we're on to something. You heard it here first. If there's going to be a royalty check, send it to me. All right. Let's go to another question that we had here on um, online. So this came in from at low, low Dawn. I'm curious what kind of services you provide as a kitchen designer. I need your help. LOL. Don't we all need a little bit of help when it comes to designing a kitchen? Uh, I provide basic kitchen design services, which you can check out on my website, which is uh, www.emptykitty.ca. And I also do a one on one consultation through Zoom. It's an hour or so length of a Zoom call. We chat together about uh, your particular kitchen and really get into the weeds about what you need for your particular space because designing a kitchen really comes down to you know your specific needs what you need to do for storage and countertop work area and efficiency and workflow and all the things and your house is going to be you know different than someone else's so that's a really good service that that i provide um and then i can just design your whole kitchen as well so that's on there vonda before I started remodeling, I thought I liked certain style. However, once I began, I found I liked what I lo what I like, and uh, I did some of everything. Do you find that? Before I started remodel, I thought I liked a certain style. Yeah, and you, you sort of start to see some more options that are out there. Um, so I find that um, until you see something, maybe you're not used to it. Until you start to see it or have some kind of you know interaction with maybe a particular you know, maybe it's a style, maybe it's a countertop option, maybe it's the feel of something, you can kind of change what you like. Um, I think that's a good thing, actually, because you can just add a little bit of variety, and there's nothing wrong with change. Um, you know, I like white cabins, but I also am learning to like having other things. And, and so it's not just, not just, you know, basic white all the time, um, even though I do like that. All right, let's go to this next question. And uh, we'll see what this one is here. So this is at Jar Jar 0653. Uh, what's more important, countertop space or a pantry? The only way I can get a pantry is if I take up 30 inches of counter space. So this is a really great question. Um, what is more important, pantry space or countertop space? Think about it for a second for your own kitchen or for your own needs. If you have a kitchen right now, that you would like to renovate, or maybe you're thinking about this year as your renovation, or you've recently done a renovation this past year or in the past few years, what is more important to you? Is it counter space or pantry space, space which would be storage? So storage or countertop, and which is which is better? So I know in the past I've, you know, I've I've said a variety of things. So one, yes, it comes down to you know, a, a few things. If, if you, if you absolutely need more cabinet space for storage, then yeah, okay. You definitely need a pantry. Remember that with a cab, a cabinet, you, you can, with counter space, you still get a wall cabinet potentially, and you still get a base cabinet underneath it. And so you really only get, you're only losing a little bit of storage space, you know, necessarily um, where the pantry would be. So you're getting, I would say by having a, a a full pantry versus a base cabinet and a wall cabinet, you're you're getting almost a, a half a pantry in, in a sense uh, with total storage. I mean, maybe not exactly, but you are getting quite a bit of storage. You can have it, you know, big drawers or nice pullouts. Um, so because thirty inches is a lot, because counter space, depending on how much of it you do or do not have, is very important as well. You need prep space. Um, more counter space generally makes the kitchen look a little more, you know, grand, I guess, uh, visually. So that that's, you know, maybe more aesthetic reason. Um, but, and you need landing area, you need, you know, you need that counter space. However, uh, is there a mixture of the two? Can you have maybe, does it have to be 30 inches? Could you do an 18 inch single door pantry that has nice pullouts or a single 15 that has a full pullout you know, racking system that you can just pull out the whole thing and then have the rest counter space. So, you know, one is not more important than the other. Uh, it, it really does come down to how it's going to play out in your design. But um, so so I, I can't say like, yeah, you definitely just want counter space and not storage. 
because what will end up potentially happening is you just have now counter space that is cluttered with junk that you need to store somewhere. And so you just have to think about in terms of what is there, a, you know, something that I can do that's that kind of pleases both worlds or no, I just need more counter space and I'll have to figure out, you know, I'll, I'll put pans under my bed, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's, um, that's kind of my, my take on that. Did I miss any, <laughs> any questions as I go here? Um, and please, if, if, if I say something that you're like, I think you're wrong, just let me know in the chat. It's all, it's all good. We don't mind. Yeah, so Helen's saying, have a countertop. I can put a pantry somewhere else. So, yeah, you, you probably... You, your opportunity to put storage is probably greater than your opportunity for countertop. So, like Helen's saying, because there's you can, you can use vertical storage uh, to your advantage. You can use, you know, shallow storage on another wall maybe to your advantage. So, there's... Generally, there's usually more spaces for storage than there is for countertop to be. That being said, um, it do, there does need to be a balance in, of what's important for your particular functional needs. So, all right, here's a good question: what What's the new trend color for in 2024? Um, I have no idea. Anybody know? I have no idea what the new trend color is. Uh, it's some kind of like greenish color, I think. Someone should look that up right now. Google that so we can answer this question properly. Um, I'm not an interior designer. I don't keep up on tr on those kind of trends. So I, I, I honestly don't know. And I, to be honest, like I, the color trend that is the most popular is the one that that I like. You know, I don't, I don't, I could, don't really care, not in a mean way, but I just don't, it wouldn't matter to me if it's blue, green, purple, or otherwise, like I, I like a particular color, I like gray, so that's the trend for me, <clears throat> but someone can look that up, and actually give us an, an answer, uh, Mark, we, we need to do a video on my barn demonium kitchen, I saw the pantry and counter up, all right, that sounds like a great idea. Here, saying if you have an island, go with the pantry. Right, so it does play out. <laughs> We're saying the universal answer is depends. Yeah, unfortunately, um, that is pan, pan, Pantone 2024. I think that's a... <laughs> you can see the blue, green, or red. <laughs> Any ideas where to store bread and rolls? Ours are piled on a kitty island in the middle of the kitchen. Ah, that's a really good question. Um, gee whiz. Well, okay, I'll just, I mean, I store my bread in the fridge because we buy like either a gluten-free bread or like that Ezekiel bread. Um, so normally it's either in the freezer or in the fridge. In the past, I know I've done a lot of appliance garages that acted as uh, bread storage for clients mm -hmm. in years gone by. And I've seen, um, you know, specific, depending on the manufacturer, you can get a, a, an actual bread drawer that, that you can you can put in your cabinet. Um, but just in a, in a kitchen that's not renovated, you just want to find a place. Um, yeah, I... I would say you could probably integrate some kind of appliance garage that would that would um, that would be good for that. It's a really good question. I'm open to ideas here, people, on that one. Where do you all store your bread? Really good. Really good question. Love it. Um, Winston saying opinion on cabinets above the windows to the ceiling. I will have not, I'll have about 93 inches wide windows with 18 inch wide pantry and at one end, 18 inch wall cabinet on the other. You're talking about putting cabinets above your windows to the ceiling. I'm not a fan of that look, to be honest. I I don't I don't like the look of it. So that's my that's my opinion. Um, you can definitely do it if you have a <clears throat> 96 inch ceiling and you're going with a you're not going to have much i mean it depends on where the ceiling or the wall 
you have 18 how much how much height do you have above your window if you have 12 inches or, or, or around that like it might not be enough if you have a nine foot ceiling or a 10 foot ceiling there might be just more there that you can make it look nice i just don't like the look so i'm not against it but personally i just don't think it looks it looks very good and it's not that accessible um like all upper cabinets but if you need that extra space and that's really important to you and you like the look of it then by all means that's the way to do it but that's um that's kind of my my take on it all right remodeling a 30 year old kitchen with an island what consideration should be given to rethinking overall lighting that's a really good question um okay well if, if you're if you're going to be putting in you know if you're kind of starting from scratch i would say definitely you know you want to have a LED pot lights, I think, are kind of the essential go-to. Make sure they're dimmer on dimmers and put them in locations that make the most sense for their use. So, you know, I'm explaining on other live streams and other videos that I'm not doesn't really matter to me if they're all lined up in a particular runway pattern in a kitchen. I think they need to be in the places where they're going to shine the light on where they need to. So, for instance, you open a pantry, you pull out a pull-out. I want light on the pull-out. Um, I want a light over my sink. Those two positions. On, on the ceiling are going to be different, but I want them where they're going to be the most effective. So I think I think in terms of that, over an island, um, I, I think having pendant lights is still probably a really good idea. And that depends. You can have a separate set of pot lights instead of that that are just for the island. Um, you know, if you want to have you know d direct light on the island, but uh, pendants can be good and depending on the size of the, it depends on how many pendants you're going to want to have under cabinet lighting i think is generally the best thing to do with with any wall cabinet anywhere you can get under cabinet lighting i would say and um and then you know what we don't think about a lot of is windows and the size of those windows and and if you can go with if you have the opportunity in this renovation to also put in a bigger window i I would suggest that too. Um, open up the space a little bit, let more natural light in. So I, th I think uh, more attention in modern design needs to be given to window sizes and, and, and space a lot for that. And um, then ambient lighting, you know, it can be, there's all kinds of different options for ambient lighting. Toe kick, you know, lights are, are kind of cool if you have an option to put in, you know, concealed LEDs uh, in strip along the top of a cabinet that, you, you know, that just give off a, a light. Um, you know, even if you want to do different colors, you can do that, especially underneath the lip of a countertop is an interesting idea inside doors and, and, and drawers and you pull them out. There's lots of lighting in that way, but I think just the standard LEDs and then pot lights uh, or, or pendants over an island are, are definitely good ideas. I like having things on dimmers and I like it when as many of them are on separate switches as possible just so I can control everything how I want it really good question and there's a lot to be said about having a lot of light in a kitchen i think it's absolutely um essential for sure emily henry makes a really nice bread box with a cutting board on top google that that might be something that we want for our bread all right bread bin on countertop yeah and those little bread bins that just have the kind of the slide up door those are kind of cool if you make your own bread, it doesn't last long enough to store. Good point. Amy makes sourdough, which is quite nice. Um, I don't know if you're all into that. Oh, your ceiling's 99. It's still up to you, Winston. Man, I don't know. I'm not a fan of the over-the-window cabinets, but that's just that's just me. You don't like cabinets to the ceiling or cabinets above the sink. No, I just don't like cabinets that span across the top of a window. I like cabinets to a ceiling for sure, and I. I don't mind cabinets above a sink if there's no window there. I think that's fine. Um, I just don't want them to span across the top of a window. You know, I've done lots of kitchens that way. I'm just not my particular cup of tea. That's all. Sherwin Williams Upward is their color of the year. Yeah, right? Different companies would have different colors, right? Like Benjamin Moore or Pittsburgh. Wouldn't they all have different co different colors? Upward. That sounds nice. I'm sure it's a really nice one. All right. All right. Um, loving all these comments and questions. This is really great. <laughs> you must have looked it up, Helen. It's, it's peach fuzz? What? That doesn't sound like upward. Here's a good, good uh, comment, too. Um, combining some incandescent along with LEDs for entertaining, you want to use warm 
uh, incandescence. Yeah, having like warm and cool lights might be something also to consider uh, in, in your design. So. <laughs> Beach fuzz, really? Will the 2025 be five o'clock shadow? You never disappoint, Phil. You never disappoint. All right, let's go to this next question. This is um, from at Kenzie Hill, Kenzie underscore Hill. Thanks again if you submitted a question on the on the, the community tab, um, community post. I appreciate it. And uh, I like when we get actual questions live and questions from you guys. So is a dishwasher overrated here are my reasons but what do you think i could use that space for storage or air drying my dishes i don't like using chemicals save money on repairs electricity and supplies I, I don't think they're overrated however i don't think they're absolutely necessary at 100 in order for you to have a functional space so yeah I don't think, but they're not overrated. I mean, I think they're a great thing to have. I just had a, I had a client who just, we, we put in, um, we had two, they had two dishwashers and they asked for a third and, and they're like, you know, I kind of want a third. You might think that's kind of crazy, but I previously had just had a, a client earlier in the week and I talked uh, not can talk them into, but I explained some reasoning on why you may want to have a fourth dishwasher. Um, and of course, you're like, what are you, what are you talking about, man? Like, a, first of all, most people don't even think about two dishwashers, let alone three, let alone four. So, you know, the size of the kitchen was something different than most of us would be used to. So it warranted having these extra dishwashers. So definitely not overrated in that regard however what you're saying is um yeah you, you save money um chemicals i guess i mean you can get you can get dishwasher tabs like i we use non-scent dishwasher tabs um and they're very eco-friendly so you know that's one way around that but no don't get a dishwasher doesn't mean you don't have a good kitchen i would say this though if you're thinking about designing a kitchen not having a dishwasher leave a 24 inch space or not leave it but put in a 24 inch cabinet directly next to your sink so that someday you're like oh, i'd really use a dishwasher or if you sell the house you'd be like you can put a dishwasher right there it's 24 inches you're good to go so all right that's my my take on that all right <laughs> let's go dishwashers are not overrated <laughs> i just baked for four hours yeah i mean i think most people would probably say that a, that a kitchen um the dishwasher is pretty important but you know and yeah I, I think you know you don't need one but yeah think about resale so that's a really good point yeah right i mean yeah, I've I've had both. I've had a kitchen without a dishwasher, and then we put a dishwasher in that kitchen after a while, and it was really appreciated. Always interesting to tune into the Tobin show to make to take away my takeaway tonight. Thank you, sweet Jesus, that my kitchen is finished. Well, that is great, Alan. I'm glad that your kitchen is finished. I appreciate that you do tune in because uh, we really appreciate you. I really appreciate you uh, coming on and. And sharing your insights on your your uh, kitchen renovation journey. So, uh, we removed much of two brick walls to install two large windows for natural light. It was a game changer for the design in our kitchen. Just can't beat natural light. Yeah, really good. I think it's something that not considered enough. I know for my personal kitchen in this home, definitely didn't consider it at the time. But one of the probably one of the biggest things I, I should have really considered was changing the window in my kitchen making it bigger and um anyway you never know the future could could possibly happen it's not 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 probably not going to happen because i don't, I don't want to get into that i don't want to get into that mess all right interesting the only time i've seen two dishwashers when i was designing a kosher kitchen yeah that that they do come up in that situation uh as well for me um but i have had clients who just wanted two dishwashers and um but this was the first for a three and a four for sure but uh 
who knows who knows what the, the future holds don't forget to give a thumbs up of course we want to give a thumbs up if you are watching this live please do so and if you're watching this in replay i would appreciate it as well so it definitely definitely helps the algorithm so they say at least all right let's do this next question see what we got here uh what do we got all right at obtuse 94 that's an, that's that's cool because it would just be obtuse if it's 94 degrees where is the best place for a DIYer to buy appliances and or and how to go about finding design help? Um, well, I hate to say this, but it depends. If your budget allows you to buy a Thermador, Bosch, Sub-Zero, you know, brand of appliance then you just want to go to a place that sells those types of appliances and look for the best deal. I think overall, you got to find a, a budget-friendly appliance, I think, for probably the average homeowner, you know, which is, I would say is probably a big chunk of my audience. We're just, you know, like, <laughs> we're just average, I guess. I don't know <laughs> any other way to say that. Um, then I think, you know, you can buy decent appliances at at, you know, wherever they sell appliances. I don't think you need to go somewhere special necessarily. If you're buying a, a, a Samsung or a GE or a KitchenAid or a Whirlpool or whatever the brand is, I think it's. I think you just shop for the best deal, and you know you can get your appliances. If you're going to go to that upper echelon of appliances, and you you, you know that's a, just a different story. I'm I'm thinking that if you're a DIYer, you're a DIYer because you are trying to save money, and if you're trying to save money then you, you're not probably buying a Thermador fridge. So your best bet is to look at all the regular, you know, look at all the usual suspects for, for those or go to secondhand thrift, Craigslist, Kijiji type of, you know, websites, Facebook marketplace and find them that way. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that either. If they're good working appliances, you can, you can do that. Um, so, you know, th that, that's one way to do it. The other thing is um, the other, what was the other part of the question? How do you go with finding design help? Uh, well, any any kitchen company, any any place you go to buy a kitchen, they're going to have designers that work there that can help you with that. Um, the only the only not downfall, but the only thing to be you know to be in the know about is that they're gonna they're selling you their product, and so their dev design device would be generally is going to line up with what they can provide you with. And so if if they're you know a highly customized place that they can do anything at all customizable, then you're able to probably fine tune a design in such a way that there's no limitations. If they sell more of a stock line, not customizable type of cabinetry, then they'll probably be, you know, built in limitations to what you can do with your design. That doesn't mean you can't get good help. Doesn't mean that they can't design you something that's absolutely beautiful. Think about Ikea. Ikea, you can get really beautiful kitchens, but you're limited to the sizes that they have to offer. And therefore you're limited to um, you know, people's creative ability to use those sizes and, you know, expand upon that to make a kitchen that works for you. Um, now, you, you can also, if you want a more unbiased design help, is just hire like an interior designer or, or a kitchen designer that, that, that's not selling you a particular product because then they, they can probably help you, you know, find a product that you want to buy and give you, you know, the most, the most, you know, pinpointed design help that maybe you might need. Um, and this goes for my services as well. So no point in me talking about this without saying that, yeah, you could also, that would be something that I would do is help you design a kitchen that you can, uh, you know, it's unbiased because I'm not trying to sell you a particular product. So th th those would be the best ways. But I think a lot of people can just go to their, their local place and get, you know, very good quality uh, design help, you know, a lot of the time, most of the time. I mean, really. Um, I did it for years. That's how I made a living for years was selling a product, but I also wanted to give the best design help I could. It doesn't, didn't mean that I wanted to give bad help. So I think there's a lot of great designers out there and um, any one of them would be very good at, at helping you in my opinion. Um, all right. So, but that, that's a good question. 
because we need we do need help and and just watch youtube there's a lot of great information on youtube um i try to put out the best quality you know information that i can live streams like this are very helpful you got other channels out there michael kitchen cider really great stuff he's got a great blog which is helpful there's lots of other blogs out there that you can also check out um you know that, that you can you can check up on so there's a lot of ways to find uh help but specific design help i think you know you, you probably want to get get somebody who's in the know in that industry and to help you all right amy learns to cook how should I finish my butcher block? I had an eight foot piece made for my new island in a second kitchen I am building in my basement. I want to stain it walnut. Is there a food safe product? Yeah, generally you're going to be careful with stains. If it's going to be food safe, you're probably not going to want to stain it. So normally with a butcher block, uh, it's just going to be like a linseed oil or, or some kind of, um, you know, or organic, uh, sealant oil, you know, sealer that you can put on that. As far as refinishing, you can sand it down. You just sand it down to the, you know, just get it all sanded down. I would probably Google that to find out what, what grit sandpaper to use and, and how to do that. It's probably a few steps of sanding it to get it, uh, what you want. Um, but I'm not sure about the stain. I, I think by staining it, you're going to have a problem with food safety. So, I would say in that case, if it's not already walnut, then like staining it a color, I, I don't know if that's something you want to do. To bring out the richness of the wood, I think the oil is what you'd want to go for. Um, and and there may be a stain out there that's food safe, and I just don't know about it. So that, that just could be something I don't know. But from what I'm experienced with, it's just uh, a food grade, um, you know, coating that you want to put on it. And generally you, you do that every so often to keep it you know nice and, and and fresh um and usable so and you're putting in two dishwashers <laughs> That's, i think two dishwashers is probably going to be coming even more and more popular um constitutional crusader with uh a, a super chat so cool thank you so so much um i really appreciate that and you look at great design work help a lot with my kitchen. Uh, that is awesome. Thank you so, so much. Um, I love, uh, I do love helping people with their kitchens and I appreciate the super chat. So thanks so much. But yeah, having an interior designer help pick colors, definitely something you want to do. Um, you know, if, unless you have a friend who's very, uh, very good at that type of thing and who can help you. With my luck, if I replace a near perfect condition 17 year old appliance rather than replacing a soap dispenser or my dishwasher, I end up having all manner of warranty failures. Isn't that the problem, right? That's the thing. You got to, uh, these old appliances, they're just, they just don't make them the way they, they used to make them. So, you know, built in obsolescence is, is what we say. Ooh, I can build almost anything, no design talent though. Well, I can't build almost anything, <laughs> but I have lots of design talent, so we could work together. Um, Steve, which cabinet style do you like? Shaker, Slim Shaker, European style? By European style, I'm thinking you mean like just a flat modern door. Um, if that's what you mean, I like a Slim Shaker right now. I really, really like the look of it. Um, I was always a shaker guy and uh, the slim shaker, I just think looks fabulous. So that that's my, my go-to. Um, but I, I like all three, but I do like the slim shaker a lot. Will custom wood or will, uh, bleh, 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 will custom panel door to hide or blend them, the refrigerator with the cabinets be a passing trend? Oh, um, I don't think so. I don't think so because in European countries, like in the UK, paneling of a refrigerator and a dishwasher is pretty much a standard feature. And why does that matter in North America? Because most of those trends, all the good trends come from across the pond, honestly. Like they, they come across our way and we integrate them. Now we're seeing more and more of these things happening. I don't think it's a passing trend. I think we'll just see more and more of it. Um, but I do get comments from people saying like, I get both, like, for me personally, I don't mind seeing a refrigerator and a dishwasher. I don't mind seeing the appliance. 
it, it's just what a kitchen looks like because that's what it's looked like for 20 years for me is a dishwasher and a refrigerator. And I've never had the, the need to be like, I got to cover that up with a door. Now, does it look cool? Yeah, I think it looks great. I think it looks really cool. I think it's nice. I think it, you know, there's all kinds of pros to it, but I, I don't think it's like number one, like absolutely necessary. And as someone who lives in North America and I'm, I'm a Canadian and I don't have any problem looking at a dishwasher. I don't. I just think it looks like part of the kitchen. So I'll just leave it at that. And I know a lot of people disagree with that, but that's kind of my take on it. Though I don't think it's a passing trend. I think it's only going to get more popular, um, you know, but maybe to a degree. All right, Mark saying they're a wood safe die. So yeah, so that, that's that's the thing. You want to make sure you, you get something that is food safe in terms of something you're going to stain it with. So if there's wood safe dyes, then by all means, you can go that route for sure. <laughs> hey, coming in from Facebook. Hey, Beth. Uh, yes, top drawer is taller and definitely fits large pans and plates. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but that is good because um, if you have a... Normally, if you have a three drawer bank, you have two deep drawers and one top drawer that's shallower, but um, it's still a big, it's still a pretty deep drawer. Like it's usually like four inches the box of it, and usually you get about a six inch or so drawer front. So you, you still get quite a lot of, of space, even in that. Yeah, no way I'm spending 1500 bucks more for a refrigerator panel. That's the other thing that does cost more you know, generally speaking. Now the cost of those may come down over time, but you're still buying an extra, you know, panel. And that's another thing people don't love to, to have to do. Darlene, great show, great conversation, great info, info highlight of the night. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Oh, mom is good. She says hi. Hey, Jackie's mom. We, uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. No pet pictures tonight. Nope, no pet pictures tonight. Just talking about kitchens. Uh, all right, first time trying butcher block. The rest of the kitchen, I'm thinking about using quartz with the butcher block on the island. The rest of the kitchen, uh, quartz. Yeah, I mean, quartz is pretty much the go-to, I guess, for most people. Uh, if you follow me for any length of time, it's not my favorite countertop. But, you know, I know Michael and I talked before, Kitchen Cider, it covers the most bases for most people. I think it's probably, you know, one of the better options out there. But, you know, we have talked before about it's being banned in Australia and likely might be banned in other places as time goes on due to the manufacturing uh, problems and stuff. They are making a bio-friendly uh, product. Um, Bretton Stone in, in Italy has come up with this to make quartz that is more friendly to manufacturers so they're not getting uh, any kind of silica diseases and uh but it's still going to burn uh the resin is still susceptible to burning so but amy i think it's a good still a good idea it's still it's still fine just make sure you get a trivet on there let's go to one more question here from on from the interweb and um we'll see what this one is all right, so this was just this wasn't one that came in from a viewer. This was just kind of a standardized question. So um, we'll, we'll we'll talk about this for a second. Is what's the best layout for optimizing the workflow? This is a whole ton. Of, this is a whole video. This is a whole three hour conversation that we could have about that. So let's talk about that. But uh, Amy's saying that she has quartz in her main kitchen. The only issue is that it's shine and reflects on the camera. Not sure what else I could use. Um, I don't have to check out your channel, Amy. I'm going to do that right now. I would say you could probably check uh, maybe a honed finish, maybe something that would take care of the glare. Um, if that's something that's that's possible. Um, but I don't know. I'm just going to look at your channel real quickly to see. But let's just talk about kitchen layouts and what's the most efficient. What was the question exactly, just so I can answer it exactly? Um, What's the best layout for optimizing workflow? This, is, this sounds like something I would write because <laughs> I love the word optimizing right now. It's my word of choice. What is the um, what would I what would I say for this? So the best um, in terms of optimizing for workflow, um, you know, 
every house is different. So as, as I just search for uh, Amy learns to cook here, I would say like overall um, that an L shape with an island, it seems to be one of the more user-ish friendly kitchen layouts that there are. Um, and saying that I'm, I am oh, just, when I... sorry, sorry, Amy. Um, if you have an L shape with an island, you, you get a ton of prep space, ton of storage of the island. You can integrate into that kitchen and you, 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 you create an, a, a good workflow, a good triangle. If that's important to you, I'm talking about the triangle Saturday's video and, and talking about why I think it's maybe not that important in a kitchen design, but it, it does you know point you in the right direction so i think that uh, if you if you have if i just go back here if you uh if if you're trying to optimize uh for efficiency i think an, an l shape generally is good in a u-shaped kitchen where you can have an appliance on on each wall and a sink on a wall you know and you get a nice triangle of nice flow in a kitchen like that i think that's good as well the, the issue and the problem with this question is there's there is no best layout because the nuances of every home is different and you know I, I talked to a client today their house is laid out completely different than the client that I talked to yesterday and just just completely different places we talked about this I think maybe last week or the week before where you know I just showed you different layouts from clients um, and, and how different the homes are and how they're you know, if there's a mixture, it's it's not even an L shape with an island. It could be a, you know, it could just be just about anything. And so, I, I think when it comes to thinking about this question, is looking at your particular, you know, you know, house, the way that it's laid out, the way the the walls are, and just de designing something that's absolutely efficient for that particular kitchen and for the way you use that space. Other than that, talking about just layouts for the sake of layouts is it's kind of not really the, the right question to be asking you know what's the best layout well it depends <laughs> it's the right answer because there's no best layout because if an l shape with an island works really well for your open concept home then i'm not then then having a u-shape island isn't the best option for you or a u-shape kitchen because you don't you don't have that ability to do so so i would say when it comes to kitchen layouts work with somebody work with a designer who can just take you through different iterations of of what a of what a, a kitchen would look like in your home moving things around to figure out what what how am i going to use this space to be efficient and to to you know match the workflow that i want it to match so that's that's the question amy i'm looking at your uh, your channel here and i want to just see your yeah, you do have a look. Yeah, I don't know. Is that too much of a glare? I, I'm just looking at thumbnails in a picture, but um, I, I guess maybe going with a honed finish. So back to back to Amy's uh, um, question here with with the with the reflection, maybe a honed finish. Um, see, like you definitely probably don't want to go with a natural stone because they, sh they they have they shine more so that you can polish a natural stone more than you can polish quartz because of the resin so the resin there's a, you, you can't polish it to the same degree that you can polish a natural stone so if you had like granite or a quartzite it, it's going to be even more shiny so i would say other than a honed finish that would be that'd be your way to go or um, like something like a corian corian uh, or star on like an acrylic surface that doesn't have near as much uh, sheen to it so it's a lot of a lot of um i don't know if that helped you or not but uh i would love to learn to cook so i might have to look at some of your videos here because i have something i don't know how to do at all all right let's keep going any more questions i have a bunch more that we can talk about but i really like just chatting with you guys about some of these things and um oh hey maybe a light diffuser would help on one at light reflect reflections yeah so it could come down to um did i do that how'd that happen i didn't even do that it could come down to uh yeah the way the way the video is being lit i'm i have no pro on that <laughs> i'm as beginner as it comes to uh you know making uh, making videos it's uh, <laughs> I do my best, but that's something you could research too. You're very welcome. 
yeah, I think Corian could be a good option. It's good. It's a good product. Um, I know uh, some viewers here in the chat have Corian. Uh, Helen in Australia has it. She loves it. So something to think about for sure. Hey, let's talk about efficiency. Uh, I like to have garbage can under my cutting board so scraps can slide uh, right into the can. Yeah, um, ta that's interesting. You know, I, I had there's different ways of doing that, of course. Um, some have the hole in them. Some are built into a cabinet so you can slide it out. Uh, if you mean the whole one, I'm just wondering how, is it is it efficient? I, I wonder about the one that you slide out from a cabinet because it's lower. And do you really use that space? Is it not more convenient to use the countertop? But uh, I, I like this this comment um, on, on, under your garbage can because you can scrape it right in. It's very efficient that way. So that's, that's a really good, uh, something to, to think about because the, the conversation I had was, if it's the pullout type, you know, from a cabinet, will you really use it and, and will it be any more convenient? And having the hole in it, if you have the one that has the hole in it, is that any more convenient? Or you can get the one that's on the countertop with a built-in, um, you know, chute basically, like the bin that goes in and you could use that. So I, I, I don't use those and I don't know, but I do know that cutting board, taking, picking it up, going to the garbage, scraping it off, stuff flies everywhere and uh, maybe... That's not very efficient. So I like this. I think this is a maybe a, a good thing to think about when we're we're talking about um, making things more efficient for sure. First time I saw a slim sugar door. This cat, Katie again. Katie, sorry. Um, I fell in love with them. I didn't know that's what they were called, uh, but I love them anyway. They were rift cut white oak. Ooh, la la la. That sounds beautiful. Um, yeah, slim shaker's cool. Sometimes they're called thin line shaker. Sometimes they're called fine line shaker. But yeah, the general idea is, is the same. Um, Beth's asking about quartzite. Is this a good option? I think in terms of a natural stone, quartzite is probably one of the best in terms of that particular look that you're going to get. It has nice uh, variation of you know veins and stuff like that. If you like that look, Usually they have more of the, the gray, white, you know, tones and that kind of idea. And they're very dense um, and very strong. There's a higher concentration of quartz, natural quartz in them, as opposed to, um, you know, another type of granite uh, stone. So it's a natural stone that has a really high concentration of quartz. It's very strong, very durable, um, heat proof, stain resistant, all the rest. It does have to be sealed. Even though it's dense, it's, it's still a porous product, so something to consider. But it is probably my favorite natural stone uh, out there. So <laughs> we got some agreements here. Yes, on the Slim Shaker and yes, on the Quartzite. So there you go. Can't go wrong with those two combinations. Those are a really great combination. Um, hey, let's just do one more question since we're here. And yeah, let's see if we can uh, look at this one. So... Thanks again. Listen, if you're tuning in, if this is your first time or 100th time, I don't know if I've done 100 of these, but I've done, we've done quite a few of these. And some of you have been on probably nearly every one of them. Um, you know, I, I appreciate you. And so thumbs up to you. If I could give you a thumbs up and if that would mean anything, then that would be great. Uh, but I appreciate a thumbs up on the, on the live stream uh, nonetheless. How can the kitchen layout be tailored to accommodate my cooking habits and lifestyle? Um, many ways. Let's go on. Let's find a better question. What are some innovative storage solutions to maximize space and keep the kitchen organized? Um, all right, let's talk about storage solutions to keep the kitchen organized. I think when we talked about this before, so I'll just run through kind of the, the, the usuals I think that are important to talk about. Number one is you got to declutter and organize and kind of get, get that done first. I think that's going to take you 40% of the way, probably. You're going to get a big chunk of, of, you know, value out of just that one bit of advice is just declutter and organize and get your cabinets kind of in order and maybe reprioritize where things are stored and how you store things in, in, in that regard. Then after that, you want to look at the spaces that are the most challenging to access and make sure that you have, you know, usable, accessible you know, if it's budget friendly, it needs to be, but, you know, appliances and accessories to access those things. So, you know, the, the, the basic main one that every pantry, every base cabinet that doesn't have drawers should have is pullouts. So just bring things out to you. If you can't bring them down or up, make sure at least they come out to you in some way, shape or form. So this goes for corner cabinets. This goes for, you know, 
any type of base cabinet or pantry. And when it comes to wall cabinets, I think you want to maximize storage, you want to maximize efficiency, you go vertical, but to access vertical, you go pull down. Uh, yes, they take up room, but they, there's a trade-off between the amount of space and the usability of that product. Same goes with any kind of corner accessible unit, whether it's a, a Lazy Susan or a Magic Corner or a Lazy Susan or the Half Moon Pullout, Le Mans, you name it. There, there's a trade-off between accessibility and then wasted storage space. So maximizing those areas the best that you can underneath your sink is a danger zone it's just a usually a mess so think about ways to add you know whether it's a, a pull out on the base or, or something to prioritize organization under there above your refrigerator is just the dead zone of any kitchen it's like what do i do up here there's lots of ways that you can make that a little more accessible in my video coming up on saturday you're going to see how messy the top of my refrigerator cabinet is and how brutal it is so i just i just you know all the blinders come off I'm just, just i'm not holding anything back um so you definitely want to want to see that but you got to prioritize that area as well so i think there's lots of there you know you can you do toe kick drawers sure you you can do you know slim last week we talked about slim spaces narrow spaces and prioritizing storage in those every area of your kitchen when properly thought about and and just you know you can figure out there's a way to make this a little more accessible. And I think that's the way you should approach it. But, you know, you know, that would be the list I'd go through all those areas. And if you're like, well, I can't add anything at all. There's even cheap ways that you can just add a little more, you know, maybe not accessibility, but a way to organize cabinets through those, you know, Ikea sells them in other places. You can buy them, I think, at even the dollar store, you know, those inserts that go in your wall cabinets to give you kind of that extra shelf on a shelf so that you, you can do, you know, just the way that you store certain things on a shelf can be a little bit easier. So that's, that, that will be, I don't know if any of those ways are innovative or not. I don't think they need to be innovative in order to be, you know, effective. I just think they need to be effective for the way you use the space. So think in terms of, you know, is this going to work for me? Is it going to be effective? Am I going to be able to, to get good use out of this? And then, and then go in that direction. I wouldn't be looking for the most innovative thing because you could be just be wasting your money for sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're almost time. It's almost time to go. Kara, deciding exactly what will go where is very helpful advice. I was one of those people who thought I would just find a place for things. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. And um, I'm sure I'm not the first person to, to give that advice to someone, but it is really valuable advice because you will end up in a space where now you just gotta you know i gotta put this somewhere i never thought about it and if you think about those things i just had this conversation today with someone but the the idea is you know do your best to try to figure out where things are going to go cross off those cabinets as you go are you going to cover everything likely not you'll probably miss some things and as you get using the space you get into a rhythm of how the space is used and that might be different than what you thought going into it beforehand so i don't think there's a perfect way to do it but i think there is a way to do it so that you can help yourself out when you get into that space to use it as efficiently as possible so yeah think think it through and uh decide where you want to put things and, and try, try to do that. Jennifer, are you seeing a rise for large butler pantry, dirty kitchen, back kitchens? Um, in new constructions, they're, they're pretty popular. I think they're probably in terms of like, if people had a wish list, most people would wish that they could have a butler's pantry for this very reason. Um, and, and, and yeah, so Nick's saying like, would love to have one, um, but whether or not you can or not. So I would say in a new construction, this is, is a very popular option for sure. Am I seeing a rise in it? Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm seeing a rise in it or not, but I do see it quite a bit. But it's been a, it's been something people have been wanting, you know, the last little while. So I would say it's a really great idea. If you have the room, if you have the budget for something like that, I, I think it's a it's a great idea overall. Um, I, have, I have a client, right, I have two clients right now that both have this uh, happening. So, and, you know, but it, it does come down to how much space you have and 
how much space you can allot to something like that and, and your budget and you know whatnot so um but I, I can't say i can't say for sure that's like yes the trend is rising i, I wouldn't go that far but I, I do think it's it's a very popular thing so at least from what i'm what i can tell from clients that i work with and and what you see online and stuff like that like it's just you know the the pantry that you you know the <clears throat> the the fake pantry that opens up into a room that's a real trend i see that on the rise um but just just a room that is a, a separate butler's pantry, I think, or a back kitchen, uh, definitely something you should be thinking about if you can afford it and you have the room for it. Oh, wait, no, sorry, I meant to hit this one. Uh, and add lighting in the cabinet so you can see items. When you close the door, lights go off. Yeah, you can do that with uh, a variety of things. My issue with these is normally they're battery operated. It's an, you know they're great at first, but then you start changing batteries and kind of be like, ah, I don't want to change that battery, and so you just you, you don't you end up not doing that. You think that would happen? Maybe I don't know. I know IKEA has these and different companies. You can just buy the lights that you put in. You get them on Amazon, and they just stick in the cabinet. I think I think they're cool. I think it's a great idea. I love the fact that when you open the drawer, it's lit. You can see everything. I think that's great. I just wonder about the replacing the batteries of those, and I doubt those things would be hardwired. So, but yeah, I think it's. Uh... Oh wait, no. Maybe you can hardwire them. You can hardwire the. Can you hardwire the drawer lights? If you can hardwire them, by all means, go for it. If they're battery operated, I probably would steer away from those. Um, yeah. So I'm glad. I'm glad you guys have my back here and can help me with these things. All right. I think that's good. We've been an hour and a half. It's been a great live stream of lots of great questions. Most of them came from you, which is really really good. So I do appreciate that. And we can continue this. Um, Again, because there's always great questions, and I like having the interaction uh, with with you guys as you're watching and we're chatting and stuff. And I know that you guys get to answer each other's questions, and I don't even see sometimes what's going on because I'm trying to keep track of, of what I can keep track of. So thank you if you participate in the chat. If you're unable to, if you're watching on a device where you can't uh, input in that, I really appreciate you watching regardless and um, you know cheering on or just saying your advice to, to the air. <laughs> I guess to the screen. That's always appreciated. And if you're watching this in replay mode and you do have a question, put in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer uh, questions and comments when I can. And, uh, you know, 99.999% .99 of you are so super kind in comments. And I really appreciate all of you. So for that, that is awesome. Um, yeah, this Saturday, we're talking about uh, the kitchen triangle and why I think it's overrated and outdated. Maybe you want to tune into that on Saturday. So that's something you can look forward to maybe or maybe not. I don't know. But next Wednesday, we will be back talking about something kitchen related. You can count on that for sure. Until then, have an awesome week. God bless you. And um, yeah, do something in your kitchen. Cook something. Check out Amy Learns to Cook on YouTube and uh, you can learn how to cook something.